What's happening everybody? Steve here, Rake and Profit over at rakeandprofit.com coming back to you with another video. And in today's video, I wanna discuss the four things that I always pay close attention to when I'm out thrifting, sourcing items to sell on eBay, Amazon, or Facebook Marketplace. If you guys are new to my channel, I teach people how to make money reselling. I've been actually reselling on eBay and Amazon, Facebook Marketplace, and a couple other platforms for almost nine years now. I've made over 2,500 videos. I helped my mom to retire. I've helped a ton of people to quit their job and start this business. And one of my favorite ways to find inventory to then sell on eBay and Amazon, so on and so forth, is going to thrift stores like Salvation Army, Goodwill, Savers, mom and pop thrift stores, so on and so forth. But when I'm sourcing, I pay attention to these four things very, very closely. And I wanna bring you into my mind when I'm thrifting and kind of how I'm thinking and just my mindset when I walk into a thrift store. What are some of the things that I'm actually paying close attention to? So if you guys are here right now, do me a big favor, smash that like button. Also, if you wanna get these videos right when they come out, make sure to hit that bell notification. And if you wanna learn more about what to buy, how to sell items, what are the best items to source at thrift stores, garage sales, auctions, estate sales, so on and so forth. Check out the reseller sourcing handbook where you can learn about five new items every day, over 1800 items a year, every single day. Check that out, first link down below in the description. So when I walk into a thrift store, there's four main things that I'm really focused on, like top of the mind, okay? Number one is I'm keeping an eye out for new inventory. Paying attention to the new inventory that's coming out is so important because there's a lot of resellers now. There's a lot of people who are going out and trying to find items for a buck or two, five bucks, 10 bucks, whatever you pay for these items at the thrift store. You know, sometimes I'll pay a hundred for an item if I could flip it for 200. And there's a lot of people doing what we do. The information's already out there on Facebook, on YouTube, on TikTok, so on and so forth. And you know, Typically, the, the biggest profits you're gonna make is that new inventory that's coming out. Now, Goodwill, they bring out their inventory in the little blue carts. Uh, Savers, they bring them out in these little red wheelbarrows or these little carts as well. Salvation Army, I don't know what they do. Um, I don't really go to Salvation too much because it really sucks in my area. But you need to be cognizant of when those new carts and that new inventory is coming out. I made a video about this the other day. What I'm seeing more and more is people just hanging out at the thrift store all day long, waiting for the books to come out, waiting for the clothing to come out, waiting for the collectibles and the board games and the toys to come out. You need to be able to just be aware of when this new inventory is coming out. So you never want to get stuck just sourcing, sourcing, sourcing with your head down for too long. You want to have your head on a swivel. You want to be peeking around, looking around corners. Um, just kind of keeping an eye out for where the employees are located, what are they doing? And sometimes like you'll get a feel, like depending on how long you're in a thrift store, if new inventory is coming out. Because typically when new inventory is coming out, they're just pushing it out. Like sometimes it's a fiasco. Like honestly, there's so many employees working, there's so many people bringing out inventory and the collectibles and the glassware and you know the books and the puzzles. I'm like a chicken with, their, with my head chopped off running around. That's where the money is. The money is in the new inventory. Now of course, you can get lucky and maybe a reseller didn't hit the book section, didn't hit the DVDs, didn't hit the clothing, and you know, you're able to still make profits, right? I find plenty of profitable items that are sitting on the shelf, but the new inventory, that's number one. Be on the lookout for the new inventory, okay? Number two, the second thing that I'm aware of when I go into a thrift store, and again, I apologize, I'm outside of the gym, I'm getting ready to go thrifting, so it's a little it's a little loud right now. Be sure to smash that like button, guys. This video is gonna help you. The second thing that I'm aware of when I walk into a thrift store is the competition, okay? Now, I've made videos in the past. You can just type into YouTube, Rake and Profit, dealing with the competition. I've done full in-depth tutorials of how to deal with the competition. When you walk into a thrift store, maybe you're a bookseller and you see a competitor there, what do you do? I like to call it boxing out the competitor. So I like to analyze where the competitor's already been, how much is in their cart, what section they're at, and I like to kind of box them out and um, just kind of work in the section that they're going and kind of 
take out that section. There's a bunch of different techniques, but you wanna be aware of the competition. Maybe you know of a local competitor. If you go to thrift stores all the time, you know, oh, Johnny Boy, reseller, likes to go to the glassware, likes to hit the puzzles. Take a look in our cart, see what it is. Don't be too creepy, but take a peek, get a feel for where the competitors are. Don't avoid a section all just because a competitor's there already because there's a lot of resellers who don't really know what they're doing or they miss opportunities, but just be aware of where the competition is. If the competitor, you know they're a DVD media seller and they're in the DVD section, go hit the textbooks quick because that's where the highest money's gonna be. Maricela says deals can still be found if a thrift store jacks up price in one category. Uh, you can find prof profitable items in categories they overlook. Absolutely. Thrift stores are extremely profitable. Never get discouraged if prices are up or, co or competition is there because there's so much inventory, things will fall through the cracks. Smash that like button if you believe a lot of profitable items fall through the cracks. They do. I don't care what anybody says. They could raise the prices 300%. I'm still going to make money. It'll be harder. So number one, be aware of new inventory coming out. Number two, be aware of where the competition is just to give yourself that slight edge. The third thing that I'm aware of when I walk into a thrift store, it's a couple of things. It's like a three part. Number one, discounts, right? The other day I was looking around and I learned that at my local savers, I could put in my email and sign up for text message notifications and I was able to get 30% off my order. Be aware of discounts, be aware of special promotions. Um, keep your eye out for the for the colors, right? That, that the thrift store is doing that week. So a lot of times at thrift stores, it's gonna be based on a color coordinate system. They'll usually rotate every four or five weeks. One color could be half off like at Goodwill, and then like the newest color is the new inventory. So I'm always looking for the newest color because I'm trying to go after the new inventory. Because typically after a couple days, that inventory has been picked over and, and your ROI really starts to drop, your return on investment, your return on your time that you spend to try to find these items. So I'm always aware of discounts. Is there a half off sales or a promotion? What's the color? Is there anything special going on? Maybe you'll learn that you can drop off a box of books and get a 20% off coupon code. So those are a couple things that I'm paying attention to as well. Number four, I'm always paying attention to where the staff and, and where the employees are located, okay? And the reason is, is because I wanna chit chat with the employees. Not only because I like to you know, build relationships and add value and it's more fun when you're thrifting and you're kind of friends and can strike up a little small talk with the workers, but also to say, hey, Greg, do you have any more books coming out? Hey, Sarah, how's everything going? Are you guys busy? Do you have a lot of inventory coming out? And get to know these people, um, not just to get stuff from them, but just build a relationship so at least they're entertained when you, when you come and you say hi, ask them how they're doing, you know, really care about them. And... Uh, yeah, you never know what inventory you can get. So build relationships with all the people, have conversations, get a feel for what's going on. Another thing that I like to do is at one of my Goodwills, they have a bathroom that you have to go through the back room like to where the employees work. Um, so every now and then I'll just go to the bathroom. Um, typically I usually have to go because I'm drinking coffee or water or whatever, but you know, too much information. But when you go through the back room, you can take a peek. See, are they processing a lot of new inventory? Does it look like they have a lot of carts that are getting ready to come back? Um, at Savers, you're not gonna be able to go in the back room, but you can always take a little peek, see what's going on. Take a little peek through the window, see if there's a lot of inventory. Um, so that was chat with employees, peek around. And number five, um, oh, okay, I was trying to read. This is like a bonus tip. I'm trying to read my, my, uh, <laughs> my handwriting. Pay attention to where the new inventory is going, all right? Each thrift store is gonna be a little different, but I've typically noticed that most new inventory is being put on the end caps, okay? But, uh, you know, for example, like the electronic section, some of the new inventory, they kind of like hide it in the back. Sometimes they put it on the front. Sometimes they put it like all the way towards the end. Sometimes they put the newest inventory up front. Uh, with clothing, it's usually on the end caps with books. For the most part, it's on the end caps, but I found thrift stores where they shove the new books in the middle. So I'm always trying to pay attention to where the new inventory is being put or maybe where it's been put if I wasn't able to see the new inventory come out. I'm cognizant of that. I'm paying attention to that. Um, I'm also looking around when I'm at a thrift store to see where the biggest opportunity is because when I walk into a thrift store, I like to scope it out unless I, I, my attention is caught by something crazy like the other day I walked in and there was multiple TI-83 and 84 calculators. So I was like, you know, I'm not gonna do my walk around. I'm just gonna attack this area really quick. But I like to take a walk around and see 
where the biggest opportunity is. And, and what I mean by that is, Maybe you noticed there's been a ton of new inventory put out in the toy section. Or maybe you noticed the book section the book section is full of new books. Because you go regularly, you know what the new and the old books are. Or maybe you're like, wow, there's like 10 clothing racks waiting to get put out. I gotta go attack that. So you always want to pay attention to what the biggest opportunity is. And don't forget, this is one of the things I love most about reselling, is all it takes is one triple or home run, one jackpot fine to pay you for the day. Right? You don't have to go to 10 stores to make a living. You can get lucky and find one jackpot score in one section, which there's a lot of new inventory that was put out that can make you 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 1,000 dollars. Right? Not every single day, but every now and then you're gonna hit that jackpot. So these are some of the things that I pay, pay attention to. Let me know in the comments, is there anything else you pay attention closely to when you're thrifting? Brave says, do you have a ratio of profit versus shipping cost? I like a $10 profit if it's $30 shipping. Um, for me, it's really like a return on investment. It's like a profit margin. I typically don't like to go less than 30% um, profit margin. So, you know, I'm open to spending $100 and only making $30 because I want to get my money to work for me. And sometimes it's easier to make $30 on a $100 flip versus making $30 with, you know, little 10, $15 items. So I'm always analyzing, okay, how much money am I risking? What's the reward? What's the ultimate profit? And what are the odds of it not selling? How much competition is there? Um, and I'm also just asking myself, like, what are the odds of price drops? Are there a ton of competitors? Um, you know, with Amazon FBA, I'll go with three, $4 uh, profits just because I'm able to leverage the fulfillment centers. But if I'm going to flip it on eBay or Facebook Marketplace, a lot of times I am looking for you know, really that $10 minimum, um, just because it takes time to list and photograph, so on and so forth. What do you think about arbitrage? That's what I mostly do. I do mostly retail arbitrage from thrift stores, garage sales, estate sales. Um, and I do most of my, my sourcing via online arbitrage. So, you know, our team is spending thousands of dollars every week sourcing off of eBay, Mercari, and Facebook Marketplace. I am on eBay only, but considering FBA where to start, you should check out my five day book selling workshop. Um, I don't know what the link is off of the top, but if you go to, if you type in rake and profit, oh my God, this is so funny. You gotta check this out. I'm at the gym and this car right here, he left his water on top of his car. Can you see that? And it just fell. <laughs> It just fell. That is hilarious. I don't know if you guys were able to see that car, but he left his his uh, <laughs> his water gallon on top of it and it fell off. Uh, what was I talking about? I don't remember. Arbitrage is buying items low and selling them high and making money on the arbitrage. Uh, pretty much the difference. So if you buy an item for $5 and the market of this specific item is 25, you sell it for 25 and you make the difference. That's arbitrage. Uh, I am considering, oh yeah, I was talking about the uh, five day book selling workshop. So if you go to Rake and Profit uh, on my YouTube channel, just type in uh, book selling workshop. You can find it. It's a five hour video. That'll help you get started how to sign up, do it all. Found Sherpa socks, 50 cents. We'll flip for 15 each. Not bad at all, Brave. Hey, Lawrence, happy Wednesday. Basically know your thrift store so you know when something is new. Yeah, get a you know get a feel for your thrift store. Um, pay attention to the color especially. Pay attention to what inventory has been sitting, what inventory is new. Of course, the more frequent uh, you go to this thrift store, the, the easier that'll become. Mama Beth says, I know, but some people hide good stuff thinking they can get it later. Check the bucket, small trash cans, bins. I just never understood that. Why would somebody hide inventory to get it later? I mean, why would they not just buy it now? I mean, I've heard of that before and I might make a video on this in the future, but why would somebody hide the stuff? I mean, to wait for half off? The thing is like, if the item's really that good based on the rotational system at these thrift stores, I mean, they're not really gonna discount items after like four or five weeks. So like, what are they gonna do? Hide it for a month? Hey Steve, that's a nice Ferrari. You talking about my Toyota Tacoma? <laughs> Maricela says, uh, I go thrifting during my lunchtime and try to make at least 
in potential profit what I make in my nine to five job, even while price is going up, items still slip through. Yeah, I mean, there's tons of, there's tons of items that slip through. And that's why I created the reseller sourcing handbook. You guys, you should definitely check that out if you go to rakenprofit.com slash handbook. It's a product I've created that essentially teaches you hundreds of thousands of items that you can flip on eBay and Amazon. And the reason I share that with you is because there's so many people who just get locked into one area, right? They only flip books or they only flip DVDs or they only flip clothing. Sometimes you're just not gonna find those items at a thrift store. Sometimes I go into a thrift store and I don't find any books. There was a reseller that went before me and cleaned it out. Sometimes there's a clothing seller sitting there all day long. I'm not gonna find any clothing. I mean, depending on their knowledge base. So that's why I like to be you know, knowledgeable in a whole bunch of different areas. That's why I always tell you guys, study the sold listings every single day. Research, research. The more you learn, the more you earn. The more you know, the more you grow as a reseller. Watch out for twice a year library weekend sales. Ours is spring and fall. The last day is 10 cent day. Scratch in Florida Lotto for pet rescues. Awesome. Appreciate you. Much love. How's Mama Profit? She's doing good. She's uh, she's consistently, you know, finding new inventory. She's consistently listing. I mean, she lives it. I got to give it up to her. 67 years old. She she loves it. I'm so grateful that I was able to teach her and I was able to learn about this. Any recommendations for liquidations online to order for flipping worth the gamble? Any site recommendations? If you flip books, um, I would use Pallet IQ. It's a great way to. I know Brave. You're not selling on Amazon FBA, but I'm not really doing liquidation right now. Um, from companies other than Pallet IQ, Pallets of Books. So I don't really have any recommendations right now other than that. How do we find the sold listings on eBay? Just go to ebay.com and type in an item. So maybe like a purple label Ralph Lauren shirt, size large. Type in all the filters used, US only. And then at the bottom on the left-hand side, it'll say sold listings. Just click that button and it'll share with you all the items that have sold. So one thing that I like to regularly do is just go through different categories and sub niches on eBay and just study what items are selling. For example, in the clothing section, there's so many different items you can learn about from jeans to blazers to sport coats to suits to scarves to hats to socks, right? Someone said they found some socks that are gonna flip for 15 each. It is insane, dress shirts, polo shirts, t-shirts. And then with each one of those categories, there's like subcategories like t-shirts, there's you know, there's, uh, you know, sporting stuff and then there's vintage and retro, uh, just there's so much. It's absolutely insane designer t-shirts. So you want to spend as much time learning about these items as possible. Brave says we have a new Amazon site near me and thought about Amazon returns. Yeah, I mean, Amazon returns are interesting. I don't have a ton of experience. I know some people do them. You just have to be able to process a large amount of inventory and have the space for it and, you know, filter out the good and the bad. Maricela says, being polite to the workers is a huge part too. Yeah, uh, big shout out to my friend Lisa. I've been seeing her at the thrift store. She started selling books a couple months ago. And uh, she said she brought some chocolate cookies or chocolates to the employees the other day. And I was like, damn, Lisa, she is the real deal. She is building those relationships. My mom, she does that as well. So if you can, I mean, it's not about being a suck up or trying to get something for nothing, but I mean, add value, be nice, ask them how their day's doing, bring them some coffee or whatnot. I mean, do something cool. You never know. I'm telling you right now, guys, you build those relationships, especially with the managers, they'll tell you when new inventory is coming out. They'll bring out new inventory. They'll give you tips and hints that will give you an advantage over the competition for sure. What up, Luis? I have a shipment I sent in to Amazon, but says it's been delivered, but they haven't processed the books for a few weeks. Anything I can do? Well, right now they're probably what they're doing is sometimes you can ship your books to Amazon and it won't get checked in because they'll receive it. And then they'll start moving the inventory around to other FBA centers because the whole goal of FBA is to get people their items in one to two days. So based on their analytics, sometimes they'll take your inventory and they'll disperse it amongst different FBA centers. Um, which will delay your check-in. Um, also nowadays with just the world being crazy the way it is, I know it's somewhat getting back to normal. Um, there's still issues with the supply chain and systems and employees and staffing. So I don't really know if there's much that you can do other than you could reach out to support or you can open up a case. Brave says been killing it in Walgreens with 90% stuff like makeup and drugstore items. That's cool, Brave. 
Uh, Bulwark, are you selling it on eBay or Amazon or Facebook Marketplace? Scratching the Florida Lotto for pet rescues. Tell me more about your pet rescue. I'm actually looking for a, I'm building out my website now. And one thing that I really want to do is I want to create like a, like a mission. Like I love like cats. I love, you know, I have two kittens myself. They're full grown now. And I want to start, like, I want to find a cause in America that like helps rescue like kittens and cats and find homes and things like that. Um, I don't know if there's anything like that out there. I was trying to find, I had one of my virtual assistants researching and I've, I've been trying to research as well. So let me know if you have any information about that. Toothpaste normally $6, getting for 60 cents, 10 boxes. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, there's so many items that you can flip, guys. That's why you just want to keep learning. Get to these thrift stores. Experiment as much as you possibly can. And uh, research, you know, download the eBay app. Download the Amazon app. Scan the barcodes. Look items up. Study the sold listings. You know, there's no reason why, you know, anybody can't learn the skill of reselling and after three months, like, have an income stream of $1,000 a month profit. There's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do that. Maybe six months to like make your first thousand dollars a month consistently profit. Um, obviously, this business take takes hard work, and you know it's not easy. It's simple, right? You're buying low, you're selling high, but the hard work is learning how to identify these items, right? That's why I created the reseller sourcing handbook. Again, you guys should check that out. Link down below in the description. Um, but this is why you should be studying the sold listings. You need to learn and identify what's valuable. Then the hard work comes in because you have to list. You have to ship the items. You have to learn how to list and ship on eBay, Amazon FBA. You have to learn Facebook Marketplace platform. You've got to learn where to put the items, what are the best platforms. But there's no reason everybody can't make a $1,000 a month profit. How do you sell on Facebook Marketplace? I mean, it's very similar to eBay. I mean, you just sign up. You have a Facebook account, so you just have to uh, go into facebook.com slash marketplace, and you can sell locally or you can ship so it's just very simple. Take pictures, create a listing, and bada bing, bada boom, the profits are coming soon. Uh, I got a lot of cats in my neighborhood, Steve. How many do you need? I don't need any cats because I already have two, but I want to be able to help help them through like a foundation or something that's already established. Have you tried whatnot? I just got approved for whatnot. Um, I've been buying off of whatnot a couple items and I've already made some money. I made a video about this, um, but I just got approved to sell. So I'm traveling for a wedding to Pittsburgh this weekend. And when I come back, I want to, I want to get, uh, I'm going to talk to Vinny about doing like a toy whatnot session and inviting everybody. So I'll keep you guys posted with that, but it's interesting. The shipping seems the most frustrating because I cannot guess shipping costs prior to purchase at thrift store. I'm gonna make an in-depth video about this, but you need to get acquainted with what the shipping rates are. Um, just based on the size and the weight, you should be able to have a bit of a range. It takes practice. Um, there's been a lot of changes and updates to shipping, but yeah, this is something you definitely need to go on YouTube, research, watch some videos. There's plenty of videos out there you know, obviously the shipping rates are going to vary if you're on the East Coast shipping to the West Coast, vice versa. But you should get an idea of the the range. Plus, learning how to utilize like flat rate boxes and stuff can help you to get a better idea. All right, guys, I think that's pretty much what we have going on here. Um, last comment, hubby and I once a week pick two people. To scratch lottos for us, it's free. When we win, the winner gets half up to $1,500. The other half goes to rescue. Our main one is Operation Catnip. Let me, let me research that. Operation Catnip. That sounds interesting. <laughs> I love that. All right, guys. Much love. Appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Again, be sure to keep your head on a swivel. Who used to say that? Redneck picker, I believe, back in the day. Anyways, keep your head on a swivel. Keep your eyes open at the thrift store. Be aware of the things that I mentioned, and hopefully that helps you. Happy picking. Much love. Smash that like button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.